I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and we are very pleased to be joined by Robbie Amel, uh, who plays Nathan on the Amazon Prime series, Upload. Uh, so the first question I want to ask, so we know that the show will be coming back for a second season, but is there anything you're able to tell us about the upcoming season or whether or not you've seen any scripts so far? Uh, I wish I could. We, I, I, right before the pandemic hit, um, Greg had the, the cast come into the writer's room for season two and hang out and, and just get to know the writers because we have some new writers for season two. Um, there was a giant wall with all the potential storylines. And, you know, Greg, for as unbelievably successful and talented and smart as he is, he's incredibly collaborative. And um, even from season one, he, he, he had myself and the rest of the cast in and wanted to know what we thought about you know, potential character arcs and storylines and, and, and what we liked and what we didn't like and what we were excited for and where we thought the show was going. So he did it again for season two. So uh, I wouldn't dare tell you anything, but, um, but I, I'm really excited about, about where they want to take the show. Um, I believe we have table reads coming up within a couple of weeks. Uh, we're trying to schedule that with, uh, I'm, I'm currently shooting Resident Evil in, in Toronto on night. So it's a little weird to try and figure out when we can hop on Zoom and, and read some scripts, but myself and the rest of the cast is really pumped. So uh, I understand that you're not able to say anything specific, but are there any aspects of the show that uh, from the first season that you hope get explored more thoroughly in the upcoming second season? Um, I mean, I, I love the relationship with Nathan, between Nathan and Nora. Um, I love, working with Andy. She's so charming and so talented and so real. Um, it'll be interesting to see where that goes because it's, they've kind of left at such a weird place. You know, she's, she's gone and he's in upload with now his ex-girlfriend or maybe not ex-girlfriend. Um, you know, she's still kind of, um, She's still very much in the picture. And um, the other thing is Allegra is one of the funniest people I've ever met. She, the only reason she gets away with saying some of the things she says on the show is because she's so actually sweet in real life. Um, so, I, you know, I'm really excited to keep exploring that kind of triangle and, and working with, with the two of them. Um, Kevin is hysterical, Zainab so funny. You know, I, the cast, we all got, really close really quick and um you never know what you're gonna get um with 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 the people you're working with and um all of us have stayed very much in touch especially through this pandemic on our on our um group chat and um we're all just really excited to get back to work and and get to just kind of play and and, and see what we can make work and and see if we can make each other laugh you brought up uh uh your co-star andy allo and um the chemistry you have with her uh, really helps make the show work as well as it does. And I'm, and what I was wondering is how do you go about building that kind of relationship with someone for a program like this? Um, I mean, part one or the biggest factor is in, anyone can have chemistry with Andy. She's so sweet and, and she's, she's a very honest person. She's very kind. Um, she's very smart. And, and she's just unbelievably talented. The second part, which was really lucky for us was myself and Andy got to know each other as Nathan and Nora got to know each other. And so our relationship as friends, you know, got to kind of mirror our relationship on the show. The other thing is the relationship isn't supposed to work on the show. You know, I'm, I'm in upload, she's a real person. And that kind of takes the pressure of a, romantic relationship off the table at the beginning and we just got to know each other as friends and then it, it it became something more than that and Greg is so so good at writing these real natural beautiful relationships between people whether they're friends or romantic leads and um it, he just made he made my job and, and Andy's job really easy. We just got to say the words to each other and um and and we just had you know we have a great rapport in real life. It was I wish there was more to it, but it was you know it was just very natural and 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 I, I give so much of the credit to the writers um for for building some something so nice and so easy to work with. 
So um, uh, I can only imagine what your reaction was when you were told about this project being a Greg Daniels created futuristic sci-fi comedy about a virtual afterlife. Um, was there a specific part of that description that made you just blurt out, oh, I am so in? You know, leading up to it, um, my wife was on Designated Survivor at the time. So she was shooting nine months a year uh, in Toronto. And I had done the network TV thing before, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's an amazing job, and it is very financially lucrative, but it is, it's all of your time. So, you know, I, I knew that my wife and I wanted to start a family in the near future. And if I was on a, you know, a 22 or 24 episode show per year, uh, and it wasn't shooting the same place as her, even if it was, we wouldn't just, we just wouldn't see each other that often, if at all. So um, I talked to my agents and my manager and I said, look, um, I'm at a place where I kind of know what I want with my career and for better or for worse, I want to, I want to try and get a half hour comedy on a streaming network with a great producer. And, uh, Greg, Greg always says I got two out of three, <laughs> but, um, obviously I got, I got all three and, and, you know, part of that was, was just taking a risk and, and betting on myself. Part of that was a lot of luck and, and great timing. Um, I remember getting the audition for it and going in and I, I met with Greg and I was the very first person to read for it. He had watched the duff with his daughter and um, he thought I would be right for the role. And, and I mean, I got the call and I was like, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Greg's. I love, love, love the script. I read episodes one and two and it's just that natural dialogue that, you know, you read it once and you have it memorized. And I went in and Greg sat me down. He's like, let's talk before you read. And I, I, I chatted with him for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then we read the first scene and we read the second scene. And he said, okay, I want to get you another scene. And he grabbed me another scene from, from episode two. And I cold read that one. And he's like, I want to get another one. And he grabbed another one from another episode. And he's like, all right, hold on. I, I want one more scene. And he grabbed it. And um, I, I met with him for an hour and I left and I phoned my agent. I was picking my dad up from the airport and I was late because my audition took so long. And I phoned my agents and I was like, ah, you never say this as an actor, but I was like, I think I booked it. I'm like, I think this is my role. It just felt so right. And um, they phoned me an hour later. They're like, Greg loves you, but uh, he has to see more people. You were the first person to read for the role. And um, about a week later, they phoned and they're like, we're really sorry. He's, you know, they've decided to go in a different direction. And uh, I was like, oh man, like I really thought, really thought this was the one. And a month later, it was the day before Thanksgiving. It was, um, it was the Wednesday before Thursday Thanksgiving. Uh, my agent phoned, he was like, uploads back you're going to screen test on monday and i went in and i thought it was gonna be like me and like six guys and um greg's like hey you were the first person to audition for this it would be really cool if you were the last and i was like yeah that would be really great and um and luckily i ended up i ended up being the guy but you know so so much goes into finding the right project and there's so much luck involved and I've just I'm so grateful that that I was kind of the guy and that Greg was willing to take a chance on me and um then we shot the show and you go I hope it works and luckily it was it was a success uh tell me uh I was wondering if you could tell me about where is it that you shoot the Lakeview scenes especially like those exteriors because that is just like I I I whenever we're allowed to travel again, I think that's one of the places I just want to go to. I don't care. I don't care where it is. I just want to go. <laughs> so any of the big wide exteriors that you can't see, um, that you like the establishing shots that you don't see us in is at um, a, a resort outside of New York. Um, oh man, I'm blanking on the name right now. I'll find the name for you. Um, um, but it's, it's this beautiful place that Greg knew about for a long time when, when, uh, when, before we shot the pilot, he showed us all the, all the exterior shots and how they were going to recreate the lobby and everything. But we shoot the show in Vancouver and, um, a lot of that, um, a lot of the exteriors are out by university of British Columbia. And I mean, if you have a chance, go to Vancouver in the summer, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. The, the temperature, the weather is amazing. It's a little rainy for like half the year, but the summer, late spring, summer, and early fall are, it's, 
incredible. Unfortunately, we're shoot, we shot in, oh, Mohonk Mountain House. Uh, Lily, just let me know. Um, uh, unfortunately, we, shoot, we shot the first season in February, March, and April. So some of those scenes that look really nice are actually freezing cold. <laughs> one of the, the scene where Andy and I sing Uptown Funk, we got one take and then it started snowing. And uh, luckily it was one of our audition scenes. So we had done it a million times in chemistry reads and uh, uh, we got it in, in one take and uh, it started snowing and we took lunch. So obviously uh, you shot this show back in 2019, so you couldn't have possibly had any idea about the circumstances under which the show would premiere, but what has it been like to see this show about life after death premiere in the midst of a pandemic? It is unbelievable. So many of the things that Greg, you know, um, built into the show over the last decade ended up coming true. It's, it's you know, the, the opening scene where you see people on, on the subway wearing masks had nothing to do with a global pandemic. It was more of a, 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 a talk, like a, um, a look at pollution and where, you know, where the, the air quality might be in the future. Um, there were so many things uh, that kind of started to come to be. And we actually, yeah, we shot the show uh, January, February, March. Well, we shot the pilot in January of 2018. And then we shot the first season, February, March, and April of 2019. And then we premiered in 2020. So some of the stuff, you know, had really come to fruition a long time after we shot it. And uh, uh, we, we were talking to Greg about writing a vaccine for the pandemic into season two, just in the hopes that it would come to fruition. <laughs> So um, another thing that's very distinctive about the show is that there are a lot of striking visuals and visual effects that we see in the show. Uh, were there any uh, scenes that you found were difficult for you to do because of the effects that had to be added in post-production? Um, I'm pretty lucky in that, you know, having been on the Tomorrow People and The Flash and uh, Code 8, you know, all of these sci-fi projects, um, which I'm a huge fan of, um, I felt very comfortable with all of the green screen and the visual effects side of things. Um, I enjoy it. I think, you know, you, you cannot, you, you can't think about it too much. You just have to kind of embrace it and trust that the people in charge of, of making it look good are going to make it look good. And luckily we had, you know, great visual effects artists and teams and, and directors who were um, very on top of, of explaining to us where things were going to be and what they were going to be like and how we can interact with them. So, um, you know, we, we were just lucky in that we had great people uh, who were very talented and very smart around us. Well, uh, Robbie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you all the best uh, during this award season. And to all of our viewers, please uh, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks so much, Robbie. Thanks, Charlie. Nice talking to you.